Okay, last video we talked about the top 8 games of 2018. And to be honest, I'm really happy how that video came out. So let's talk about the future. Let's get into it with the top 9 most anticipated games of 2019. These are my games that I enjoy and I look forward to playing. And I don't speak for everyone. The rest of us, plus a lot of games I usually happen to buy, aren't the type that usually, you know, garner a lot of attention. They're not very hype. And I have my own preference, so let's get into this. Time is money, and money is time, and it costs money to play some video games. Let's get into the top 9 anticipated games of 2019. So, starting up our top 9 is Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul re called to exist. Okay, this is no surprise, if you've met me before in person or the internet or whatever, I am a huge Tokyo Ghoul fan. I own all the manga volumes, watch every episode of the anime, even though a lot of them suck, even season 2, like they were season 2. So when I heard it's getting an official console game, not a handheld PS Vita game, only exclusive to Japan, not a phone game, even though their phone games are pretty fucking late, I needed this game. So I was hyped when I saw the trailer, I saw it was hyped when I was adapting the re story, even though they need to really just focus on the manga side of it, not the anime, because the anime's been skipping chapters, but you get the idea. And, well, we don't get a lot of it, and I really want to see that Namco Bandai, you know, put their heart and soul in this game. It looks like a survival horror um, version of Dynasty Warriors, which I'm kind of surprised they're doing, and it will be multiplayer based, so I can really check it out and learn to like the game. I really hope that we get more information on it, but the only thing that we've got so far is that Namco Bandai want that uh, pre-order so yeah definitely want to check that out in 2019 and definitely will be streaming it on the Twitch channel and as well on uh, YouTube so yeah number nine Tokyo Ghoul Cartel this and at number eight Code Vein I was really excited for the anime Dark Souls customization seems interesting combat seems interesting it has an actual story revolving around vampires and some other shit but they have the combat like the partner system from a lot of their games which is what I noticed Namco Bandai has been doing a lot of and but the Gothic environment. You guys don't know I'm a sucker for go Gothic environment. I've been a sucker for the Devil May Cry series because I love how the environment always look, even the fucking reboot, because it always had this Gothic atmosphere, this sort of Victorian London atmosphere. Also, the ability to cut them out and create your own character, and then create your partner, is dope as shit. This is why I love games such as, you know, Dark Souls to, um, there was another game, Freedom Wars for the Vita. That also did this thing for my system PS4. But um yeah, I really do love the idea of it. And plus, I'm a real fan of Dark Souls. I love Bloodborne and all that. Um the anime Dark Souls that I've always wanted to see. And plus they got one thing that no other game has. Well every game has if you're in Japan. Anime waifus moving on. Let's go to, let's go to number three. Well seven. Yeah, seven. I'm leaving that in there. At number seven we have No More Heroes, Travis Strikes Back. I've always loved the No More Heroes game. I love the from its vulgar language. Two Travis dick jokes. Trust me, there's a lot of dick jokes. I mean, you do shake your katana to get your beam up. So, yeah, there was a lot to love. To the actual beam combat, which is probably the best interpretation of how to do a Star Wars game the right way. And it's not even a fucking Star Wars game. But this one doesn't have any of that has very linear beam combat and technically is considered a prequel taking place between No More Heroes 1 and 2. How you know it's cause you're fighting the bad girl's dad? Actually he's on your team and you get transported into a video game? Oh, a whole lot of weird shit. This is a very very weird subplot. But it's a prequel and I can't be too mad because well, a Switch No More Heroes game. I honestly wanted a collection of No More Heroes on the Switch but I think this is the closest thing we're gonna get. Especially considering we don't know if we're getting No More Heroes 3, and that's the only thing. The only gripe is that it comes out around where my top 5 games come out, so the game's gonna need to chill until I can get some money. But until those games come out, I might pick it up, might wait for a price drop. All I know is that this game better be worth it because, to be honest, it just seems like a bunch of mini games in one. I still am very curious to see how they're gonna lay this game out, and I generally wanna see it. So, yeah. Number 7 has to be No More Heroes. At number 6 we have Dead or Alive 6. 
Not gonna lie, fighting games in 2019 may be taking a huge step back and may not be the hugest focus on either my channel or of 2019, but Dead or Alive 6 may be the one of the few fighting games that will. See, the games I play mainly have waifus and fan service. The game has waifus and fan service, and I've even done a few reaction videos on the series. If you don't know, I've been a huge fan of Dead or Alive since Dead or Alive 3. Too young to play Dead or Alive 1, and Dead or Alive 2 I got to play on the PS2, and I, I enjoyed it, but I didn't become a new fan until Dead or Alive 3, because I loved the combat. Dead or Alive 4 was a huge game for me, because I enjoyed the hell out of it. And it was just extremely fun, and then Dead or Alive 5 came out, and uh, it depends. If it was the full edition game, I loved it, but if it was like last round, the final round, I wasn't too huge of a fan of it. Plus, this story seems to be a little bit different from most of the Dead or Alive games, and seems to be a whole lot more darker than them. It seems like we're going to be exploring through a lot of things, and this game just seems a lot more darker for a Dead or Alive game. And I'm really excited to see it. Plus, the combat seems to be amazing, especially with the new zooming mechanic, and you can tell that every hit's going to have an impact. And they have improved a lot. Then, they added customization. This time you can finally dress your favorite wife work the way you like it. And you know what? No one's gonna blame you. So yeah, Dead or Alive 6 is definitely on the list to go check out. At number 5, is kind of an obvious one, Jump Force. Not gonna lie, I was not super hyped for Jump Force. The gameplay was okay, the concept was dope, but then I actually got to play the beta. And what do I have to say besides, this game is fucking amazing. It feels like they took the usual 3v3 that's seen in like, you know, Storm games and all that, and they improved on this shit a lot. I fell in love with the game, and also shout out to Namco Bandai for actually supplying me with a beta code, and for allowing me to play it. We also had the E3 build at Anime Expo, and I was allowed to play that one too, and enjoyed every minute of it. This game is going to be probably one of the biggest anime games coming out. Also, it has customizable avatars now. It's getting a pretty decent base roster, and no telling what the DLC might be. Hopefully, it's someone good. And hell, it's essentially just Justice League Anime Edition. Also, they basically took the Infinite Crisis story and turned it into anime. And I really can't wait to see it. With this all star roster and basically Infinite Crisis, this game's gonna do pretty well, and I highly support it, and I'll definitely be checking it out this year. Yeah, at number 5, we have Jump Force. At number 4, Anthem. I am super hyped for Anthem, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not gonna front. When I first saw Anthem, I was like, yo, this looks fucking dope. And the reason why is because, honestly, it looks like Iron Man the game. Like, I'm super excited for it. You get an Iron Man suit and fight monsters. Like, that is dope as shit. And, you know, who isn't ready for that type of combat? And it seems fun customizing your armors. And it's gonna be dope to play with a squad of people because guess what? It's a squad, it looks like a squad shooter and it looks extremely fun. Not just that, what got me extremely hyped was that in recent days during an interview with one of the um, creators of the game, they said there's no DLC, it's just the classic game. What is the 2004? They're giving you the full game right up front like, yo, here you go, all the game, all the levels, all the armors, all that right in and there. Cause the one thing that people were scared of when Anthem first got announced was the microtransaction, but there is none. So I'm really hyped to see what they do with this game and I'm really gonna be like day one purchase if I see any more gameplay. But yeah, Anthem is definitely a number four in the spot. It earns its way and to be honest, I didn't expect that me would be interested because again, I never follow hype trains. You guys already saw that with my um top 2018 games, cause bro, Anthem looking fucking fire. At number three, and this is a very anticipated game. You guys already know my reaction. Resident Evil 2 remake. Okay, I love Resident Evil. This is the only survival horror game besides Silent Hill that I can actually handle. Cause I'm a, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a wimp. And RE2 is my second favorite. With my first being Nemesis, because goddamn, who doesn't love Nemesis? But now we can finally follow Claire Redfield in all that eight, in all that eight glory. And da I mean Leon Kennedy, even though you know him and uh, Dante do look very similar. 
as they tried to frantically survive the Raccoon City incident. You know, before they decided, you know what, fuck Raccoon City, let's nuke that place. Yeah, they did that. They did that. You can also see how Mr. X has been at the zombie home, plus Ada Wong. Combat seems more in line with Resident Evil 4 to where it's not tank combat, but it's more over the shoulder combat. And that's something I'm really curious about. And the characters look and seem to be a bit younger. Sorry that I made that up. Which is an interesting story narrative. And it seems that the story does have a few differences than how it happened in the game. So, I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to actually play it. And yeah. So yeah, number 3 is Resident Evil 2. And at number 2 on this list, Devil May Cry 5. Finally, Devil May Cry is back. Not a reboot, not a spin-off, not a fucking pachinko machine. Konami, get your shit together. Devil May Cry 5 is the continuation of the series, taking place right after 2 and 4. Now, if you don't know what I mean, technically, for, it's, it's confusing. But 2 takes place right before Devil May Cry 5, because Dante's right, I mean, came out of hell. And guess what? We got a new Nero that's actually fucking hilarious. Like, this man is fucking funny. Dante, who is still the same badass, corny motherfucking demon slayer. And we got a special guest, Kylo Ren. Well, I mean, B. But we get to stop a demon invasion. We get to have a hot girl drive us around in a van, Nico. And we get to have the gang back together. And we fight yours, and I mean Virgil, I mean yours, and. And yeah, plus I thought Sparta killed him. I, the Sparta didn't die for this, but yeah, it's gonna be dope to finally play the game. I got to play some of the demo for the Xbox. I wish I could have um, captured some footage, but I was at someone's house. But anyhow, it was a great experience, and plus it's gonna be really nice to see Devil May Cry make its return back. So yeah, number two is Devil May Cry 5. In that number one. Well, it should be pretty much obvious. Kingdom Hearts 3. At this point, was there really any doubt? Kingdom Hearts is my all-time favorite gaming series. I remember playing it back when I was around 4 when Kingdom Hearts 1 came out. And I enjoyed the game series since. And now we're finally going to get Kingdom Hearts 3. It's been a long wait. It's been a long, long fucking wait. And I feel like we deserve to actually, you know, talk about it, you know. We're finally getting the end of the Xehanort Saga, we're finally going to be able to kick that man, Aeus. And we finally get to play as multiple characters because we're playing as Riku in some story part. I feel like that's going to be at the end of Death Moon Island, not at the end of Death Moon Island, at the um, Door to Darkness. It's going to be dope to actually see all of this and with all the hype for the game, such as merchandise being a huge thing. The game was at Anime Expo, and hell, I got the Anime Expo exclusive bags. Um, you know, we got the opening intro, 0.2, well, 0.9 was dope, and I actually might do a small series on 0.9, I don't know, if you guys want that, put that down in the comments down below, and this game is a major anticipation, especially after King Mark 2, and I'm really excited to see what they do with the series, I'm really excited to see if we're gonna see what's in the box that the Lost Master had, and it's generally the end of an era. So after Kingdom Hearts 3, because that's going to be like, well, what are they going to do next with the series? It's going to be really cool. But I've been loving the combat, I've been loving the world, I love how the game looks. Unreal Engine did its shit. <laughs> they had a good, they did a good job switching from Luminous to Unreal, so that's another thing I'm really excited for. And I, I'm really happy for this game. So yeah, this is one of my majorly anticipated games of the year. Put the time to face our fears. Before we end off this top 10 list, all I gotta say is for an honorable mention, Mortal Kombat 11. I was gonna put this game in the video, but I didn't have much time and it was a last minute thought. And put this as a full out top 10 video, then I would definitely have put it in there. So, yeah, this is one of the last videos of the year. We have one more video for the, you know, just a reflection, and then after that, we're done. Um, first of all, I wanna say Happy New Year's. Um, happy holidays, because, you know, the holidays were pretty good. Um, yeah. A huge honorable mention is, of course, Mortal Kombat 11, because I definitely am checking that out. Also, go follow me on Twitch so you guys can see me actually play some of these games, because I don't do Let's Play that much anymore. Actually, not at all. So, if you guys really want to keep up with me playing the games and all that, and actually see me doing that and make content for the game, go follow me on Twitch. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you guys can keep up with me. 
discussions and speculations on these games. I love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a happy new year. Start up 2019 right. I'll see you guys then. Peace out.